everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. When in the midst of a busy day at your work or in your home, a heavy luncheon may cause you distress or leave you feeling drowsy because it's so hard to digest. That's why more and more people are turning to the Horlicks luncheon. A glass full of Horlicks is a refreshing and nourishing luncheon. Energy-giving, sustaining, too. And you couldn't find the food more easily digestible. That's why Horlicks at noon keeps you alert, mentally and physically. Why busy people prefer Horlicks to the heavier, hard-to-digest luncheon. Overweight people will find the Horlicks luncheon a fine reducing plan, for it's without the heavier meal's excess of calories. Try the Horlicks luncheon tomorrow. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor at your drugstore. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau is proving even more successful than Lum and Abner had hoped for. The old fellows are receiving hundreds of applications. And their only worry now seems to be the suit that Squire Skimp has brought against them for $4,200, which is scheduled to come up next week. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner over at Lum's house, which they are using as headquarters for their new enterprise. Lum seems to be very busy. Listen. Abner Peabody, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Provide for her through sickness and health, and forsaken all others to love, honor and obey her as long as you both shall live? I do. You will now join right hand, or left hand, or just join hand. By the power invested in me as Justice of the Peace of Cloverleaf Township, I now pronounce you man and wife. And now, my young friends, as you go out into life to grasp the skirts of happy chance, may your stream of life unruffled run, and the roses bloom without a thorn. Fireballers, sir. Uh, yes. I know that you're sure aiming on putting on all the trimmings on this wedding, ain't you now? Well, I feel sort of responsible for this wedding. I was the one that agged them into getting hitched. Yeah, I recollect when you called them up on the phone the other day and was telling them what a good match they'd made. Well, Ruth just never had nerve enough to ask her. They'd have been married long ago. Yeah, uh, well, now, do you want to go through it again now, Lum? No, I believe I know it by heart now. I've got to start getting dressed up. They're supposed to be over here at 4 o'clock. Oh, yeah. You want to change clothes, huh? Well, I just slip on a neck collar and tie and put on my frock tail coat. Yeah. I don't mind to put myself a little bother when I'm getting five dollars this away. <laughs> well, I thought you told Ruth on the phone the other day she'd make him a special price of two dollars and a half. Well, I did, but uh, you know, like I told him this morning, that's just for the regular cut and dried ceremony. For five dollars, I could give him a first class wedding with all the trimmings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the first cash money that we've took in a long time, won't it? We? Well, we're sort of, sort of partners in this matrimonial business. Yeah, but this ain't got nothing to do with our matrimonial business. This is sort of a sideline with me. This is justice of the pieces. Yeah. Well, I wish we'd start getting some money then pretty soon so I can send for Elizabeth and Pearl. I got a hearing from Elizabeth this morning just raising the roof because I hadn't sent her money for her and Pearl to come home on. And uh, another lady? Yeah, she said her relations is getting tired of feeding That's what she said. Well, she ought to understand, Abner, that you just ain't got the money to send her. Well, the uh, trouble of it is, Lon, see, I ain't told her that the oil well weren't the oil well. She, she thinks we're still rich. You mean you ain't told her that we sold out to Squire Skin? No, or? no, I ain't told her nothing about it. I, I just never wanted to ruin a trip for her. Well, law me, Abner, when she gets home and finds out that we've lost the store and never made no money out of the oil business... And... On top of everything else, it's Squire Skimps is suing us for $4,200, and he's got everything we own tied up with tax men papers. He's going to hire in a tank. Yeah, I know, and I know, kid. I, I just don't know what to do about it, hardly. Well, you're a great one to be the head of the domestic problem department of our matrimony bureau when you can't even run your own home. Well, what would you do about it, Mom? I suppose I, I'd rather tell her while she's down there so far away that she can't throw nothing at me, but... I'm afraid if I do tell her, she'll just stay down there in Texas and not come home. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't want to advise you on that problem just offhand, Mr. Peabody. If you write your troubles to the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau, I'll be glad to study the situation over in that... Oh, my 
goodness, there's somebody at the door. Well, it ain't time for the wedding yet, is it? Granny, I ain't got a car on yet. Come in. Uh, you folks will just have to wait. Well, come in, Squire. Yes, uh, how are you gentlemen today? Oh, all right, I reckon. Yeah, we thought you were a couple wanting to get married, Squire. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, just dropped over to talk to you gentlemen a little. Well, I ain't got time to talk with you, Squire. What is it you want? I've been hearing that you fellas have opened up a matrimonial bureau here in Pine Ridge. Yeah, yeah the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau. I'm the president. Well, for me, and that was a mighty good idea. A mighty good idea. Can't understand why I never thought of it myself. Yeah. So you fellas stand to make a lot of money out of that if it's uh, handled right. Well, now, they ain't no use to beat around the bush, Squire. What are you leading up to? Well, uh, just to come right out with it, Mum, uh, I've been thinking right smart about this thing ever since I heard about you going into it. Now, just to be honest, uh, you fellas have got something there. But you don't know nothing about a business of this kind. While myself, I'm a natural-born promoter. That's been my life work. Yeah, I know that or right. I was just thinking, uh, sort of, on account of us being such old friends, that uh, I might come in as a third partner in this thing and uh, sort of help you fellas out. Well, now, that'd be a fine howdy-do, wouldn't it? Us take you in as a third partner when you've got everything we own tied up with taxmen papers and law suing us here for $4,200. Well, now, Lum, uh, as far as the lawsuit goes, well, now, that can be handled. Yeah, what do you mean it can be handled? Yeah. Well, I was just thinking now, uh, that suit is set to come up next week. But uh, if you gentlemen want to give me a third interest in this matrimonial agency here, why, I'll just call the suit off. Just uh, withdraw it. Well, now, here, let me tell you something, Squire. Me and Abner put confidence in you before. Yeah. Time and again, you've come to us and told us on account of us being such old friends, you'd do this or that for us. Now, we've had all the dealings with you we ever want to have. Now, I wouldn't even swap nickels with you. Now, if you want to call the suit off, all right. But as far as being a third partner in this matrimonial bureau, I, I wouldn't be associated with you in no kind of business. Now, I don't like to be unhospital to nobody, but the quicker you can get out of my house, the better it'll suit me. Well... All right, Lum, if that's the way you feel about it. But I'm warning you right now. Don't come around wanting any sympathy when I get that judgment for $4,200 and go to foreclosing on your property. Good day, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe you made a mistake there while I'm talking to him that way. You mean you want him for a third partner? Well, no, no, Lum, but uh, that looks like a pretty good way to... Get out of having that lawsuit. If he does win it, why, well, it's going to be awful hard for us to leave our home. Yeah. Special, me with Elizabeth and Pearl. Yeah, never thought about that. I might have sort of flew off in the handle of him. I just wished I knowed one thing. Yeah, what's that? Well, where that dream is that he signed assuming all the obligations of the oil business. If we had that to produce in court, he wouldn't stand a chance in the world winning that seat. Yeah, but if we ain't got it, Lum, there ain't a chance for him to lose, neither. Yeah, <clears throat> I've got to get dressed now before these folks get to you. After the wedding, me and you can sit down and talk this thing all over here. And if we decide it's best to let him in with us on this matrimonial bureau, uh, we can go over there and take him up on his proposition. Yeah, well, I believe it's the thing to do, Lum. As bad as I hate to have any more dealings with him, I believe it's best. Mm-hmm. You're looking to take a wet rag and sort of sponge this collar off. Really need a new one, this that Lord turning sort of yellow. Get, uh, get my frock tail coat off in the wall there, Abner. That they covered up with them newspapers. Yeah, yeah, I'll see it. I'll see it. Ain't had that thing on since the day we so low I went. No. <laughs> well, you were sure dressed up that day, I'll say that. Yeah. Get these papers off of here. That was a good deal I made that day, too. I do say so myself. <laughs> Smartest thing I done was making Squire sign that dream answer where if anything happened to the oil well, he wouldn't have no comeback on us. Yeah, and if you hadn't lost it. Well, it wasn't my fault, Abner. I pinned it right in my coat Oh, pocket. I know, Lum. I know. I ain't blaming you. No, not at all. Here, here, slip this on. I'll help you. <laughs> Try it on for size, sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much obliged. How do I look? All right. Why? Well, I just wondered. 
I always feel sort of important when I get this out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's that uh, wedding ceremony I wrote out there? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I think I better slip that in my inside coat pocket so if I do forget, I can sort of take it out and glance at it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a shame if he wants to get them about half married and forget what else he's going to say. <laughs> yeah. I never will forget when I first started Jess as a piece. And it, it was a young couple come to me to get married and... Uh, and I'm telling you, get married and hot. Ever. Hey, Granny, look you there. What is it? Sure, I recollect now. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I had this coat on the day I made the deal. <laughs> the day I sold the oil business. Well, no wonder I couldn't find it. I was looking in the wrong coat. <laughs> what are you talking about, Mom? The agreement that Squire Skim signed. Here it is, right here. <laughs> it's been in this pocket all the time, and I never once thought about having this coat. <laughs> well, with this important paper back in their possession... The old fellow should have no worries as to the outcome of the lawsuit. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's pay a little visit to the Stevens home. Mrs. Stevens is just returning from her shopping, and we find her talking to her little daughter. I bought you a present, Dorothy. What? 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 You just wait and see. It's in one of those big packages. We'll open it up in a minute. Here, you hold this while I take off this coat. Oh, let's open my present first. Come on, Mom. You can take your coat off in just a minute. Oh, all right. Here, here, you better let me open that. You have everything all over the floor. Oh, let me open it, Mom. Oh, all right, careful. Oh, I will be. There now. See, I didn't spill anything. There's your present. That large glass bottle there. Those are Horlick's malted milk tablets. Oh, thanks, Mom. Are these just like Horlick's malted milk? Why did you buy me tablets this time? Didn't they have any regular ones? Oh, yes. But you can carry Horlick's tablets to school with you. To school? Really? Yes, that's why I bought them for you. Horlick's tablets are just like Horlick's malted milk here. The same thing, but in tablet form. You'll love them, I know. Here, just dissolve one or two in your mouth. Mmm, these taste awful good, Mom. I know they do. They're awfully good for you, too, dear. When you're at school or out playing, they'll give you nourishment and energy. Keep you from getting too hungry or too tired. Well, I'm going to tell all the other kids at school about Horlick's tablets tomorrow. I bet they'll want their mothers to buy them some, too. You can't blame them, can you? And I think their mothers will be glad to buy them, too. There isn't anything that helps children develop healthy bodies like Horlick's malted milk, either in tablet or powder form. And there's a fine suggestion for all you mothers. Let your children carry a supply of those nourishing, energy-giving Horlick's malted milk tablets to school. You can get them, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. The small 10 cent size flask can be conveniently carried in a coat pocket. And the tablets come in larger bottles, too. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.